Well, you know, we all know that the Greensboro Science Center is one of the best attractions in the state, but did you know the role they play in animal conservation? It's bigger than you think. I spoke with senior tiger keeper Carolyn Mikulskis about their tiger breeding program. All right, so when I think about tigers, I don't think about a breeding program, but that is a thing. You guys are a part of this. How does that work? Absolutely. So the Greensboro Science Center is a part of the Association of Zoos and Aquarium, and that's a really high level of accreditation. And so because of that, we actually get to be a part of the SSP, which is the Species Survival Plan. And that actually works globally, and essentially they play matchmaker with each other to make sure that we have a viable population for captivity. And so we're really lucky to be a part of this Machin Tiger SSP. So then you say play matchmaker. How does that start? Because you, yeah. you got to be careful with these animals. They're huge. Absolutely. So the Sumatran tigers pose a pretty risky type situation because we can't go in and separate them if it goes poorly, right? And so we have to do a lot of bonding beforehand, not just with the keepers and the animal, but with the two. And so we do things called howdies, which means that they get to share a wall with each other and just get to know each other, get comfortable around each with other. With a fence between Exactly. Them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So with a good fence between that they can't penetrate, so they can't hurt themselves or each other. And then what we end up doing is doing a slow introduction. So we want to pair it with times that make sense for them. So when the female is in estrus and receptive to the male. And so hopefully during that time, they'll really want to be together and there will be minimal aggression. But just in case there is, our staff actually has, will be running through um, what we like to call dress rehearsals. So yeah. we're going to be in there pretending that the cats are in there and we're going to go through different scenarios. Hopefully everything will go perfectly in textbook, but because it is such a serious situation, we have to prepare for Absolutely. all situations. And so the hope is, what's the time frame here? I mean, you don't know, but. Yeah, so I am really hoping for a late spring, early summer introduction. So we are pretty much ready to go. We have wow. our protocols out. We're starting to do our um, um, dress rehearsals per se and we actually work with a mentor program too with AZA Network and so those are keepers who have had successful introductions in the past and because they've had those successful introductions they're helping us make sure that we have all of the right things going on you know we're seeing all the right behaviors from the female and we're seeing all the right behaviors from the male and that we have a really good setup to work with as well this is perfect good luck man yeah. this is great maybe yeah. we'll have little babies I'm hoping fingers <laughs> crossed fingers crossed Little Aww. tiger cubs, I know, Aww. it's a, really cute. And um, he was super active that day mm -hmm. that we were in there. But she did say, it's, you know, you gotta be very careful because um, Lauren and I were just talking, male or female, they can attack they each will, other. They do not yep. care. They don't care. Just absolutely beautiful animals. When I went out to the Huge. Science Center, they weren't out. I don't know if they were sleeping uh, or what have you, but just absolutely gorgeous animals. It's funny, you will, if you walk by the cage, sometimes, this doesn't happen a lot, but they still, even though they're in captivity, they practice their hunting. So mm. there are times when, Mm -hmm. it, they'll, they'll crawl creep. up to someone and then yeah. they, ju they just go like this. Like they raise their arms up and then put them back down and then they'll walk <laughs> away, but they're kind of like practicing. Oh, that's oh, really They're stunning. Okay, so I have to tell you, if you go to the Science Center, kind of toward the end of the day, a little like, a little bit before they're gonna close, they're feeding the animals. Oh. So then they're all out because they want dinner. Ah, so I've been lucky tip. a few times to go and see it. Cause sometimes you go out there, you know, they're inside oh, yeah. or you can't find them, but they're active at that time of day cause they're ready to eat. So that's what I did wrong. I went around lunchtime, our lunchtime. So I need to go towards closing so I can see. Yeah, <laughs> I usually get there relaxing. like an hour before closing and yeah, they're all out eating. It's mm. just beautiful. I, and Lauren's right. Cause when you see it in the pictures don't work, yeah. right? video just doesn't do it. You got to see it in person and see how powerful and huge so that animal is. You can hear is. them and you can you feel can, the vibrations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different experience. I just imagine them to be so fluffy and cuddly, but that yeah. is totally opposite. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go are. inside the pen. Yeah, um, don't do that. Crazy.